In this video, I want to highlight one of the many new features in OpenJDK 21. It's Java Enhancement Proposal JEP 445, Unnamed Classes and Instance Main Methods. As I will show you in this video, it's a preview feature, meaning you need extra flags to use it. And it's all about reducing the number of keywords when you write, for instance, your very first Hello World Java code. The goal of this JEP 445 is to make it easier to get started with Java, as you need less code for the main method. So it's ideal for students or anyone who wants to start experimenting with Java. It may also help make Java more popular in bootcamps where JavaScript and Python are dominating now. Tom Coles also wrote a nice blog post about this, as you can see here. And to be honest, I stole a bit of his approach for this video, as I first want to show you an earlier JEP, a Java Enhancement Proposal 330, which is called Launch Single File Source Code Programs. So this JEP 330 is already available since uh, OpenJDK 11, Java 11, and the goal was to make it as easy as possible to start a Java file. So if you have a simple Java program, a single file, and you want to execute it, that you uh, don't need to compile it anymore. Uh, let's look at a diagram to show this. What was the situation before JEP 330? You had a Hello World Java application, so a single file with some Java code and you wanted to run it, to execute it. Then we first needed to go through the Java C, Java compiler, uh, that makes a class file, bytecode file, from your Java file. Now the bytecode file, uh, the goal of this file is that it can be executed by the GVM, the Java Virtual Machine, on any platform. So you could uh, use this file and transport it to a Mac or to a Linux system or to a Windows system and execute it there, and then you just execute it with Java. Java and your class file, and it will execute this application, and in this case, output hello world. Now, if you just want to execute that Java code on your own machine, then it could be simplified. And that's what happens with JEP 330. So what actually happens here is that you can now execute Java directly with a Java file. In the background, it will still do this compilation. So from the point of view of the GVM, nothing has changed a lot. So internally, it will do this compilation, create this bytecode file and execute the bytecode file so you get the same output. But from the user point of view, this becomes a lot more easy because you only need to execute this one command. Let's look at what JEP330 brings us. So this is a typical Hello World example the minimal example of a Java application. So you have this public class, you have this public static void main method, you have the string arguments, and we have the output for hello world. Now, if we execute this with an older version, let's see, so I'm on version 17 of Java now, I can execute this file world without compiling it. So just Java and the file. So actually, in the background, this has been compiled by Java, Java C, and it executes and gives us the output. Now, this way we can already very simply run any Java application um, that's just a single file. There is one limit here, and that's the fact that we only can use the modules which are part of Java. So uh, system out is there, uh, input output, a lot of other classes are there available for us to use. But if we want to use a dependency, then we are still stuck. We still need some kind of full Maven or Gradle project to execute this. So not related to the JEP, but I just want to show you here is that we can use Gbang. Gbang is a tool that's also a bit aiming students and people learning Java. And it's a bit of an extension of JEP 330 because it allows you to define dependencies and versions inside a single file and then execute uh, that file again. It's all clearly explained here on the website, uh, also how you uh, download and install Gbang. The advantage of Gbang is that it will also install Java if you didn't do that before. So it's really easy for students and people starting with Java if you install Gbang you will also get a Java version installed for you. Now let's look at a simple example that illustrates uh, the advantage of using Gbang. 
for this example, um, I want to parse some JSON. So I have here a JSON string, which has some logging example data. Now, an easy way to parse JSON to a Java object is with the library Faster XML Jackson. So we need a dependency to it. And that's what we can do in a Gbang file. So a Gbang file is again, just a normal Java file. We need this extra line at the beginning to define that this has to be executed as a script and help Gbang uh, to tell what uh, other files are here. Um, we also say which dependencies we want to use. In this case, it's the dependency on this library and we have the annotations, the coordinate data by the version. Doesn't matter which dependency is just for this example. And then we have for the rest, a full application where we define the JSON as a multi-line string. Uh, we have a mapper, the mapper converts it to a log message, which is, uh, tup, 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 which is here. Uh, we also have levels, we have log message. So we have uh, some of the advancements of what we have seen in the latest Java releases, like a record is here. So let's execute this with Java. JSON parsing. This doesn't work. So you see, it doesn't recognize the object mapper. Um, it doesn't find this package for the dependency. So that's something that uh, plain Java cannot do for us. But if we execute the same thing with Gbang, then you see that it has built a jar. It actually has downloaded also the dependencies and it can execute this program and output this JSON data. Not related to the JEPs, I just wanted to illustrate this that uh, JEP330 is already really great and allows you to run single file applications. If you want to do a little bit more complex stuff with a single file where you also have dependencies, then take a look at uh, Gbang. But okay, back to JEP445, which is uh, the main topic of this uh, video. You see what I did there? Because JEP445 is the unnamed classes and instance main methods. So let's take a look at the JEP itself and how do they describe the goal of this uh, Java enhancement proposal. These chat pages are really great. They give a lot of insights on why something is proposed, what is the goal, what is the end goal, what is the inspiration. So they are really nice to take a look at and really read them into the details. But they also, of course, provide some basic information like in which release they become available. Like this one is in preview in 21. Um, who reviewed it, who proposed it and stuff like that. So it's all here. Now the goal is to offer a smooth on-ramp to Java so that educators can introduce programming concepts in a gradual manner. And if you look at the example that we also used before, the hello world, there is a lot of, how do they call it here? Clutter, too much code, too many concepts, too many constructs. We have a public class, we have a public static void, we have an argument string array. For people starting with Java, this is already a lot uh, to digest, a lot that they need to understand, or in most cases, in the most uh, tutorials or uh, courses, um, the educator just says, this is the start, take it as is, and just look at the print line. That's the starting point. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could just have something like this, if we remove everything around it, and make it a lot easier. And there are even different levels. So you can still have the static void, you can have a static void without arguments, or you can just remove even the static. So we'll look into that uh, a bit later. We also discussed this JEP 445 in the Fuji podcast episode 28 about the launch of Java 21. And this is what Mohamed Taman said when I asked if the goal of this JEP is to make it easier for people to learn Java. In our time, we love to explain every single keyword and we feel, we feel powerful and excited to know about what we are doing. But nowadays, as you can see, people cannot even read 
five seconds, even, you know, long and the shorties, we are in the era of shorties. So, mm -hmm. yes, this is to, the main idea here to bring people more, especially students, into, you know, the language easily without complex, you know, uh, ceremony about it. Then when they learn it, they will start to, they will get into it later on because they will see it when they involve this JEP is actually my favorite one in the list of uh, new features in Java 21, but Simon Ritter doesn't really like the goal of this JEP as much as I do. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm going to be very controversial here, and I'm going to say that this is my least favorite feature in JDK 21. <laughs> and that's like not because disagree. I think it's a bad feature. No, don't get me wrong about that. And I do absolutely see the benefit, but I think that the idea of, of making it simpler to write a Hello World application is it doesn't really help us in, in a great way. Yes, if you look at your very first program in Java, you can make it simpler and you don't have to worry about, well, what are these args and you know the, the, the class structure and all sorts of things like that. But the moment you move beyond that, you're going to have to start understanding all of the details about how the platform works. And so making that very first program, or even you know like a couple of programs, very simple and, and straightforward, Yes, it'll make it more attractive to a few people, but I don't think it's really making that much of a change. And he is correct. At some point when you learn more about Java, you'll need to understand why that extra clutter is there. But Piotr Bzibel points out the fact that the whole programming world has evolved a lot and Java just needs to follow what other languages also are doing. But I also like think that this is like maybe like a tiny uh, signal that Java in general is also adopting to the times, right? So at the time, like two decades ago, newcomers already knew any other C-derived language. And these days, it's no longer true, perhaps. So maybe we just need people to pick Java as their very first programming language, or they tried language without these constraints, right? Uh, like public static, blah, 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 blah. So maybe, maybe that's the reason. And in that regard, I, I, I like it that it's responding to this to these needs, like to the change of the society in general. Enough talking, let's look at some of the code examples, the minimal code examples to illustrate this new JEP. Uh, by the way, I will be using SDK man to switch between Java versions to make clear what has evolved in the language. If you don't know SDK man, please take a look at the site. It's a uh, command line tool which enables you to switch between Java versions, manage the versions which are installed on your system, uh, also install other things like Maven, Gradle. There are other things that you can install with SDK man, but in this example I will use it to switch between Java versions. Okay, I prepared this file, the new main, and you see that we have the classic main method as we've seen it before in the Hello World example. I am still on Java 17, I think. Oops. Yes, I'm still on Java 17. So um, let's execute this. Okay, no problem. This works. Now let's comment this one and go to this one. So here you see we still have the same uh, public static void main, but we don't have the arguments uh, anymore. Let's execute it now. And Java 17 doesn't recognize this. This doesn't work. I can't find the main string methods that Java is designed for. It is expecting this method as the starting point of the application. Now, when I'm recording this video, Java 21 is not here yet. So I'm using an early access version and using SDK man to switch to this version. Okay, we are on 21 now. Now let's execute the same uh, file. Oops, it doesn't work either, although we are on the new version. But as I said before, this is a preview feature and a preview feature is not available uh, by default. You have to do something extra to be able to use it. And that's what we can do with the source and enable preview command, these flags here. So these flags tell the Java compiler and Java 
to use source level 21 source 21 and enable the preview features and now we should be able to execute this well you see we get this output static void without arcs so this means we can have uh, a simpler method here and now let's try if we have both If you have both, you see it still works our program, but it's taking this one. So it has priority. So there's a priority defined in uh, which methods are, are looked up. So this one gets priority and is executed. Void with arcs is the one being executed. Now the Jeb says that we can uh, simplify it further. So we don't need the public static anymore. Let's see if this works. And you see, indeed, we have the void with arcs, this one. So we don't have the public static anymore. And let's see if we can do the same with, oops, this is looking dirty. Okay. Again, we have the same thing. So this one has priority. This is the one being executed, void with arcs. So we need to comment this one. To run it again. And now we have the void without arcs. So you see, you can come from this public static void main with string arguments, string array to just void main. Now, course we want to see if we can try all of them and this doesn't work you can have can't have all of them uh, all together in one file but as the goal is to make it as simple as possible this is anyhow a bad ID now the JEP doesn't talk only about instance main methods it also talks about unnamed classes so what's the effect of that one and let's scroll down a bit unnamed classes that's here so it's a whole explanation of why we can even remove the class so uh, this should now become the minimal code that we need for a hello world application so as you can see we have a java file which only contains a void main no package no class just this one method and the print line should work Oops. again I forgot my source and enable preview but actually this is nice it gives an error but it tells us it's a preview feature and disabled by default as I said before so let's execute it with the extra arguments Voila, here it is, hello world. And it gives us some note also, it uses preview features of Java 21, but we have our hello world with a very simple, basic Java code. That's it, that's my favorite JEP of Java 21. Of course, there are others which are more exciting, uh, which will bring more evolution into the Java language. But as I do love to teach and to talk about Java and get people introduced into the language and starting experiments, I think this is a really great approach that you will have this minimal Java code requirement to run any kind of application or demo application or hello world or whatever that is your starting point to learn the language. If you want to know more about the many new features and preview features and incubator features and the difference between them uh, in Java 21, then make sure to listen to the Fuji podcast where you can learn all about these new gems.